So my first question for you is, why do you think so many business owners, more specifically new business owners, have a misconception about what it takes to win in business versus what it actually takes to win? Because a lot of people just copy what other people do. We're, we're not analyzing businesses to their full potential because we analyze it from the outside. Mm. It's, it's, you can't look at a vehicle and, and say, hey, oh yeah, Rolls Royce doors open backwards or Lamborghini doors open up. Because you could put Lamborghini doors on a Honda. It does not make it a Lamborghini. Right. You have to analyze the, the you got to, it's not analyzing and saying, hey, let me look at the car. It's not the car. It started in concept from the builders, from the designers, the way that they design things, the materials that they use and things like that. And when it comes to business, I'm going to flip it into businesses that look at, for example, um, events. I do events. A lot of people don't understand some of the components of events. They say, oh man, y'all be going on tour. And they'll think that that's the biggest thing is, hey, go on tour, make a lot of money. That's how y'all make money. And it's like, no, that's actually how we save money. Thirty eight percent. That's the amount of entrepreneurs that are struggling to get their business funded because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be. Now, you can look into alternatives like corporate credit cards and vendor accounts. But the truth is, the easiest way to get access to five to six figures in funding is to have good personal credit. As an entrepreneur, the stress of trying to build a successful business is already enough as is. So why work harder than you need to when you can simplify the funding process by getting your credit restored? My company, Take All Financial, has served hundreds hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you by helping them avoid the pain of getting denied for business funding by restoring their personal credit and we want you to be the next one. So click the link above or below this video to secure your free consultation and let's put you in position to get you funding that your business needs. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Marvin Francois Show, your number one source for all things business, finance, and investing. And today huh, is a very special day because our guest today is a father, husband, entrepreneur, investor, and business mogul galore. He's the owner and founder of Recession Proof X, which is one of the largest and most prominent financial literacy communities responsible for retiring 2,500 mentees, creating 100 plus six figure earners and 30 plus seven figure earners. Whether he's showing off his business acumen through his online personality of Poindexter or flashing in a $100,000 watch to talk that talk as his alternative personality of bust down, our guest's mission has always remained the same, to empower his people with the same tools, information, and resources that have allowed for him to be successful, and today, he's here to do more of the same. Ladies and gentlemen, from Stockton, California, by way of Atlanta, Georgia, fresh off the funnel hacking live stage from receiving a $25 million plaque and a $10 million plaque, I'm here with the one, the only, Mr. Marcus Barney, aka Him500. What's going on, boss? What's going on? Yo, that intro, I, I'm, I'm copying that. I'm, yeah. a, I'm clipping that up, putting it, it on my own. Take it. That's all yours, man. How are you, bro? How's everything? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Happy to be here. Love man. it, man. Excited to have you on. You know, like I said, we've, we've had a lot of heavy hitters on here, a lot of yeah. movers and shakers. We ain't have Big Five. You understand? I, and I've been following you for some while. And as someone who's been in RPX, you know, I talked about it a little bit in the, uh, in the intro, being a part of that community and seeing the work that you've put in to build that community and everything else that you're doing outside of that. It's truly a humbling experience to have you on here, and I'm I'm excited to get into the game, man. I'm really am. Nah, dope. It's dope. You know, I like I like, and just salute to you on on what you've been able to build. I see it, um, the impact. I see so many of the uh, of the clips mm -hmm. on social media being shared, going viral. And when I look at those things, it's like, yo, when I see a video that that goes viral, and I see things that take off, it's just showing like your your reach and understanding how impactful what it is that you're doing, how necessary it is. So. Is, 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 is commendable, and I just want to salute you on that. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you, man. It really does. So let's let's dive into it, right? You know, I did a, I did an okay job introducing you, but nobody knows Marcus Barney better than Marcus Barney. So for those who don't know, let's get them familiar. Who exactly is Him500? Man, you know, a uh, 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 flawed human being. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's, that, that, that's been blessed and favored, but just somebody who accepted it myself for who I am. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I understand I got to uh, I, I go through things. I'm brave hearted. I'm willing to try things. I'm willing to fail. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to succeed. But then I learned that, hey, Marcus Barney is a great communicator. He's somebody that can actually help it and kind of think on a level where he can help other people. Great, you know, attributes go into my father as a father, you know, um, great son. So it's just, you know, I'm a, I'm a human being. Just, right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a person, man. I've just been blessed to be able to be impactful and understand, like, 
how my impact can help others. Right. And, you know, somebody just want to lead the world a better place than I found it. I love it. I love it. And you've been doing a tremendous job of that through, once again, just your your ability to understand business and take that information that you've gotten through your personal experience and share that with others, you know, like we touched on a little bit earlier to help them also reach, you know, those six and seven figure years and beyond. I want to start the conversation off there, right? Talking about business and talking about entrepreneurship. And I want to dive into a quote that you actually had that I really appreciated where you said, most people don't have a lack of budget issue. They lack a, have a lack of hustle issue. So my first question for you is, why do you think so many business owners, more specifically new business owners, have a misconception about what it takes to win in business versus what it actually takes to win? Because a lot of people just copy what other people do. We're, we're not analyzing businesses to their full potential because we analyze it from the outside. Mm. It's, it's, you can't look at a vehicle and, and say, hey, oh yeah, Rolls Royce doors open backwards or Lamborghini doors open up. Because you could put Lamborghini doors on a Honda. It does not make it a Lamborghini. Right. You have to analyze the, the you got to, it's not analyzing saying, hey, let me look at the car. It's not the car. It started in concept from the builders, from the designers, the way that they design things, the materials that they use and things like that. And when it comes to business, I'm going to flip it into business is that, look at, for example, um, events. I do events. A lot of people don't understand some of the components of events. They say, oh man, y'all be going on tour. And they'll think that that's the biggest thing is, hey, go on tour, make a lot of money. That's how y'all make money. And it's like, no, that's actually how we save money. Mm. We make money by impacting people on tour because it allows us to get to get with our community. It allows us to be hands-on, but we lose money on tours. Really? We lose money, but guess what? I'm a businessman. So if I take a million dollars and invest it into my touring company, and my touring company loses $150,000 because with travel, with, with venues and team and staff, guess what? It's okay. Not only did I invest a million dollars over here into this business, this business actually also lost. It helps me. It's okay with taxes, but I know it overall helps my bottom dollar because it's allowing me, it's intrinsic value to the people. So a lot of times people don't see these metrics, but you're looking, I see people go do things and they don't... And, it's like, yo, you going on tour and you don't even know how to make it profitable for yourself. Right. Because you look from the outside. And that's one of the things with business owners is they look at a lot of business models. And don't get it wrong, some tours and some events make money. Bigger events can make money when, when structure right, with sponsorships and things like that. But sometimes there's different reasons why we do things. But when you look from the outside, you can't get it. So that's why it's important. I tell people is that you got to understand when it comes into business is, is analyzing and dissecting from the conceptual stage of why people do things. Everybody has different reasons. So when, when we look at that, business owners will look and say, hey, I want to start a t-shirt company and I'll, I'll see what this company is doing online. I'm just going to do that. But you don't understand the back end concept, right. the things that, that started from the front and why they're doing things and, you know, what they're their operations are like and what's their overall goals and, and, and how they're driving and what their end goals are. Mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of business owners fail is because it's analyze and, and, and duplicate. You know what I mean? Like you watch, you analyze and you duplicate and that's the issue instead of, you know, watching, analyzing and figuring out how to improve. Mm -hmm. Like I look at businesses, I analyze them and I figure out, okay, how can I improve on what's already happening and not only improve, do I understand the full concept or have insight to get the concepts of why they do certain things? And then how am I going to do it for my benefit and how it works into my atmosphere, if that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. To dive deeper into that, how big of a role do you think social, because essentially, you know, like you said, a lot of people just, essentially just a copy and paste time that we're living in, right? Where it's like, okay, you have individuals that see you or maybe see Alex or Mosey or any of these other high level entrepreneurs doing something and they think they have to do exactly that with no idea of what, like you said, the back end looks like and a lot of the different logistics that go into that. How big of a role do you think social media plays in that? Which aspect? Social media, because it could play into the aspect of the social media play into it of helping the, the entrepreneur or does social media go into the aspect of kind of making people copy. Making people copy. So uh, an another example I'll give to kind of dive deeper into, I remember there was a clip that you had posted, you were in Philly. I think that was when Neo was doing his um, his sign revealing on, on the street, whatever yeah. the case may be. Yeah. And there was a young man who walked up to you, he was like, hey, what's the difference between rich and wealth, 
right? Uh -huh. So at, for him, it's just like, okay, cool. He's probably consuming a lot of content where he's hearing guys like you and all these other people talk about wealth and all these different things. But it's like, bro, you don't even have your base set up, right? But for him, he's like, he's trying to copy the framework of what eight, nine figure entrepreneurs are doing. You don't even have a six figure foundation. Yep. So more so diving into like, how, how big of a role do you think social media plays in the, in the same point of just copy and paste? So uh, uh, it's, that's the biggest corp, that's the biggest corporate in, in the issue. Mm. That's the biggest issue with the copy and paste and a lot of failures because it's also influential and it sparks the interest, which is amazing. Social media sparks the interest of people to get into entrepreneurship, sparks the interest of positive topics. So I love that. I think it's amazing that people get exposed to um, the, 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 the mindset to even ask the difference between rich and wealth, mm -hmm. right? But my thing is that I don't want people to get overly consumed with the hot trending topics and not look at and forget the in-depth work that's needed. And so a lot of, you know, I've been getting backlash. They're like, yo, man, you've been being, you've been being a little snappy, a little mean. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not being mean. It's just sometimes we, we've, we've been over glorifying this entrepreneur space and now we got everybody's attention. We, it's, it's a trending topic. It's hot now. People are looking at it. Our, our community is diving deep into it. But now let's dive deep into the work. Mm -hmm. We got your attention because we couldn't have this conversation before. This wasn't a conversation topic in our community. Now it's a conversation topic and right. I love it. But now let's not over glamorize it and forget to tell people that we got to do the work mm -hmm. and that there is a, a foundation that needs to be set that we got to build off of. And it's certain key components to life because people always want me to talk about credit. And it's that third. I said, listen, I built the community. I got a, 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 a thousands of students, hundreds of students that are leading in the financial industry space that talk about it all day. Mm -hmm. There's now, there's another component that needs to be talked about. We got that foundation set, but now we got that, but there's a foundation set that comes before it that we're missing. So I'm going deeper into the root instead of going up the ladder. See, I can go up the ladder and talk about more benefits of, of what comes off of having good credit. Mm -hmm. Paint a picture is that uh, just as high as the tree grows is just as, as deep, deep as the root goes. goes. Yeah. And that root is, 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 is just as needed as it is the, the tree for growth. And so when you realize and analyze, hey, we're looking at all the benefits from having good credit from getting business loan, 250,000 in credit, get this credit card and do this. As, as great as that is and how that stems up and shoots up, there's a root of foundational behaviors. There's a root of foundational um, uh, education that's needed. There's a root of habits, financial habits that are needed that need right. to be instilled. And this is the important conversation that now I'm looking at going, I'm having this and it's not as sexy. It's not because this is the dirty work. Mm -hmm. See, the root gets dirty. The tree bears fruit. Mm -hmm. but the root gets dirty. And so now this is more so an uncomfortable conversation, but I've built enough to where I can go into the dirt and have this conversation and get dirty because I've established the foundation of where we at. So we go on both ways with it. I love it. I love it. Diving deeper into that, like you said, you know, um, it's about setting that foundation to where we're able to do the work that's required at the lower level so that we can get to that six, seven, eight figure mark and beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a successful business owner that has done multiple, multiple seven to eight figures. Um, I've always heard that the first million is the hardest, right? And then from there, essentially, once you get to that first million, it's still work, of course, but the first million is always the hardest. Talk a little bit about your individual journey of what, what, it, what did it look like going from six to seven versus seven to eight? What was the difference in the work that was required between getting to those two different uh, milestones? <sighs> Going from six to seven was, it was the most difficult. Um, because at six was the goal. Making a few hundred thousand dollars a year was the goal. And you think, you don't know what is going to come to get to seven. Mm -hmm. And there are shifts and things that happen. And for me, it was... It was challenges and barriers of like, hey, you're you're doing this, but you start to run into mistakes of things to do better when mm -hmm. you want to grow. Mm -hmm. And so as I wanted to grow, I didn't know how to grow. So I was just kind of expanding my business to say at least like 
at six figures, I'm running into issues of like, hey, I got to build in better systems for customer support. I got to pay attention to it. Right. Because it turns from, hey, a hustle to a business. Right. Going six to seven. You can hustle for six figures. You got to ha- operate a business for seven. Mm-hmm. And so that was my main thing was, hey, create a different system and a systematic going into it to like, how do you scale it? How do you serve more people? How do you expand your personal reach? Because I, I was doing it myself. And so my biggest hurdle was, okay, how do I, like, what is it that I have to do? I didn't know. And it was just like, okay, I, I literally went from providing a product and service. I was, I was doing um, credit repair, different operations, but I was direct servicing. Mm-hmm. And I realized when I went to seven figures, it went from doing direct service to actually providing a, a opportunity and a platform for others to learn what I do and duplicate it. And when I did that, then I had to figure out, okay, this has the potential to grow the same business model, the same industry. It has the potential to grow, but I also have to incorporate more systems. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And learn more systems and then learn how to reach people and learn about marketing and learn about advertising. Right. Because before with the direct service, it's like when you're in a credit world, you don't have to create a, you don't have to create a, a, a need, a need for good credit. Mm-hmm. They, the need is already set when they got denied for a car mm-hmm. or they got rejected for an apartment or they, they, they not able to go get a credit card. So the need is already there. Mm-hmm going to seven figures is that I had to niche my way into an industry that was scalable and and much more competitive in the coaching space and say, okay, I want to take my expertise of what I do and coach people on it. But now I got to make sure I built this whole model out. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the hardest things because once I got, once, once I got that understood of like, Hey, this model can't go where I want it to go. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's, 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 it's almost impossible to get this business model of servicing and doing the work to that seven figure, eight figure lane. So what's the next evolution of business? Every business has another tier to it. And you ha- and I learned that I need to have three or four tiers to whatever it is that I do. So that's why I tell people now, you always have your product and service, but you should have a live event. You should have a high ticket mentorship. You should have digital products. And I started building out verticals and my hardest part was learning the verticals to build out. And once I learned those verticals to build out around my product and service that I did, it took me to seven figures. But realizing you have to, in order to go to seven figures, that was the hardest part to realize, hey, you got to build out these other verticals. Gotcha. Gotcha. What is the, what is the journey? Because you know, you've been very public with a lot of the shoulders that you've been rubbing and a lot of the different connections you've been making. What does the journey to nine look like? The journey to nine is honestly um, collaboration. Is it, 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 it's mandatory that it's collaboration mm-hmm. and it's understanding industries at a whole and realizing the relationships. It's 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 hundred percent. It's relationships. It's not work. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not work. Um, it's really relationships on going into nine figures because the work is already being put in. The work is already done. Every day I get up and work. I'm already doing what I do. It's just figuring out how to work in manners that will incite the nine figure, Mm -hmm. you know, paychecks. So that's my main focus now is that, hey, I get up, I operate business. I get up, I market. I get up, I advertise. I get up, I create. I get up, I network. I'm on phone calls. I'm doing things. So now it's just, okay, but these things are generating seven to eight figures. Mm -hmm. Now you got to do it at a level in with like, let's just say I got a relationship with, and I'm doing a, a deal with, let's click funnels. Let's just say I got an affiliate with click funnels or mm-hmm. identity IQ. Great. But now you go into a point where you start to go into equity deals. Mm-hmm. You start to go into a point where, hey, as you promote, you do equity deals. But then once you start doing equity deals, you start to see what you're worth. And then you start to understand in private capital and private equity and things like that. And mm-hmm. knowing, okay, I I see what I have the potential to make a business into. So now I start to work with different private equity people and figure out, okay, well, how do we go and get involved with a business? Because I know what it takes to blow it. I know I have the components in media and marketing and, and, and push to push a business. So now how do we invest at a high level 
to get in and get out? And then what industries to be in? Right. So then you got to look at, okay, well, what industries? You look at the at the wealthy people and you see what industries they're in, leather and goods, um, spirits. You see them in, um, everybody's in, you know, private equity. Mm-hmm. So you start to look and see what industries are they in. And that's the industries that I'm looking at. Like, yo, I got to diversify into these industries, but still maintain my brand and who I am. Diving deeper into that, you know, you're once again, you're, you established yourself in the world of credit. And then from there started to expand, diving into serial entrepreneurship and investing in different businesses and different lanes. You've invested in real estate. You've invested in ambulance companies. You've invested in private jet companies, things of that nature. The multiple streams of income come talk is, you know, rampant right now on, on social. Um, you having experience in all these different businesses, what's the side of managing those investments and running those kind of businesses um, across the board that we don't see? Is that it's a headache. And if you don't have the proper structure and infrastructure in place, it can, it can go wild because you get tied to things and businesses that other people operate. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things when it comes to relationships and people think that, you know, hey, I meet somebody we can possibly build. It's not, the opportunity can be there, but I got to know who I'm getting in this relationship with. Mm-hmm. And so you, because you have to build, you, you have to trust and know that, hey, I know I'm not going to stop working. Like I did a deal with Earn Your Leisure. I know I'm never going to stop working. I see they're not going to stop working. Mm-hmm. It's been tested, tried, and true that they're going to continuously work and build. Okay, well, I know I have to continuously work and build. So when you look at things, a lot of times people look and say, hey, I want to get in a business with somebody. I want to do this. They're only looking at it from the selfish aspect of, well, not even selfish, but the 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 one-sided aspect of like, what can I gain? Mm. And they're not judging the, the people that they're getting into the relationship with. That's one of the things that I, I'd say all the time is that I'm looking at it's long term. I'm not looking at just, hey, can we make some money off of, oh, man, you got a, a, a candle company and candles about to go hot in, in uh, the holiday season. Let's go sell candles. Right. Nah, what do you do? Like, how hard do you work? And are you going to match my work ethic? Are you going to match my networking? Are you going to be out in rooms that I'm not getting in, continuously growing your network and adding value to yourself? Or are you going to sit here dormant and watch me do it? Mm-hmm. I don't want to partner with you. I don't care how much money the business could potentially make mm-hmm. because I understand is that industries have seasons. Mm-hmm. Things have seasons. We may stop doing this and have to continuously grow, but when it's time to pivot, are you in a position to actually pivot and capitalize? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing you got to judge when people say multiple streams of income. Don't be thirsty just to make the money. Look at the multiple relationships that you're going to stream off of. Like when I'm creating multiple relationships with the people I'm in business with, when I did my private jet company, when I did that investment, this company has been around for 10, over 10 years doing this. I worked with them three years before I even got with them and we went through this. Mm. I've seen their continuous elevation. I've seen their continuous work. I've seen their clientele base grow. I've seen them lose partners and, and still continuous grow. Lose, uh, you know, people who was their influencers, lose them, but they didn't stop. Mm-hmm. Continuously grow, build new relationships. And that's the thing that I looked at. I was like, okay, this is why I can be with you because with or without me, you're going to continuously work. Right. How often are you, because you mentioned the Earn Your Legion, I definitely wanted to touch on that. You know, obviously with Recession Proof being partnered with EYL, EYL University, powered by Recession Proof. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to know how that partnership came to be, right? Because, you know, essentially you're you're your own powerhouse, they're their own powerhouse. Uh, Talk a little bit about about how that came to be. It it was just a thing of, realistically, a conversation, but it's based off a relationship. Mm Mm-hmm. You see seeing people that work, but what happens is, is that you see strong points like they're a media company, I'm an education platform. Mm-hmm. I have a media component. They have an education component. Mm-hmm. My media component can, can't touch their media component. Their education component can't touch my education component because of what I built and how I structured it is that this is my main focus is really building out the education. So I'm just having a conversation and they're super big on collaboration. Mm-hmm. They've, 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 they've really led by example in our community of like being willing to collaborate, being willing to extend with so many different people and different verticals to empower everybody. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I always, I respect about it. So 
when we had the conversation, it only made, it made sense. Like, hey, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm partner with anybody, it gotta be somebody that's gonna, that has a bigger vision than me. Mm-hmm. And that was the. Listening to you talk about that, it sounds that, you know, when it comes to you and partnerships, cause with any partnership, it really comes down to like two factors, right? It's about the person and the opportunity. But listening to you speak, it sounds like you, it's it, for you, it's hundred and, well, not a hundred percent, but like 99% more so about the person. Cause like you said, in business, you have those seasons and those waves to where it's like, regardless of what the opportunity is, if me and you aren't in alignment with the work that needs to be put in, the things that need to be done and how much we're getting ready to put into this, um, it's not going to work. Right. How often are you, how often now are you getting inquiries about partnerships? Like I saw, you know, the other day on Instagram, there was a young gentleman that walked up to you at InvestFest with the curriculums. I know you got some heat for that, right? How often are you, how often are people reaching out to you for potential partnerships? Cause you've built this massive brand. I'm sure you're getting tens of, if not hundreds of inquiries on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. And have you ever gotten an inquiry where it's like, all right, the opportunity really, it's all right, but I see what you have going on. I see who you are as a person. I think we can do something here. Yeah. So people are, it's, 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 I get it. it it's daily. Okay. It's daily. It's daily. Right. And, and that's why I had these conversations. Some people say it's a little rough, but people don't understand that every, I don't even know you. Right. Walk up to a chick and just, just, yo, this is what I'm on. Like, do you even get, take the opportunity to get to know somebody? I don't right. know you. Right. You, you know me and see an opportunity, but that, that's it. Mm-hmm. You see me as an opportunity. So imagine people say, yo, man, you know, I want to talk to you real quick. Like you imagine how many people see me as an opportunity and walk up to me every day with a oppor- with with the handout. Because mm-hmm. essentially that's what it is. Man, we can do something together. I don't know you. Mm-hmm. You haven't taken the time to 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 build the right relationship with me so I can actually see who you are and build rapport. And so I get deals all the time, every day. Some of them could be amazing. Mm-hmm. The issue is I don't know you and I, you know, I don't have, I listen but I also vet out and, and judge. Mm-hmm. So I'm having to judge people on a daily when you walk up to me, what you say. If I go look at your social media, are you working? Are you working more than me? See, it's not even always about money. Mm-hmm. Are you working more than me? Mm-hmm. You're coming to me with, a, with an opportunity is that how much are you working? Let me go look at your website. Mm. Let me go look, look. When you present me an opportunity, you, you, you saying we can make a million. That doesn't excite me. Mm-hmm. I'm. You may see a million, but I may see something and go, okay, this is 10. Because of my understanding and my business acumen and my experiences, mm-hmm. you may only see a million. I may see 10. You may see a million. I may see 100,000. Mm-hmm. So, but bigger than that is that do you, I have to analyze, does this fit in my wheelhouse of what I have already going on? Right. So when people walk up to me with opportunities, I, I challenge people, whenever you op- present an opportunity to somebody, think, do I know this person? Mm-hmm. Do I know what their forecasting and their future is and what they're working at? And is this something that actually aligns with them? Sometimes it's not an opportunity for them. It may not be the best opportunity for them, but they may know something that can help me or put me with somebody who I do align with. And that's one of the things I look at and I'll be looking at people say, what we can do together. And I'm looking like, yo, you want me to go work for you. Mm. <laughs> like, that's what you want. You right. want me to go work your, your idea. You have an idea, mm-hmm. but you want me to go work it because I built a platform. I built relationships. I have built capital. I have built social equity. Mm-hmm. You want me to use that to boost your idea, but you have not done any of the things that I've done. And then you'll come with just an idea. Mm-hmm. Come, to, come with an idea and $100,000. Mm-hmm. Then we talk, bring me $100,000 in the idea. Well, we ain't got the capital yet. Well, then you haven't put the work in to match what your, your request is. I've put in countless hours in work. Right. Countless brand building, countless hours in self-development, countless hours in, in, in sweat equity. What do I get when you bring this deal to me? But then what makes it make sense? Mm-hmm. Have you already established it? I had one guy come to me with a built out plan, a built out brand. He built the relationship. He came to the point and told me to give him money and for partnership. And I did it. Mm. (laughs) See, 
he came and got money from me and said, this is what I need from you to give to me on this. This is what we can do. This is the relationship was already built. I don't, I'm not even going to say the brand yet because it's going to come out. Mm -hmm. But he, he showed me the worth provided me the service, gave me things to, 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 to make me see the vision. He nurtured you. Showed me the back end numbers and yeah. was like, you see it, you like it, you understand it. And it aligned with, when I look at, it's in the clothing company and I, when I, so I say leather and goods, it aligned with my overall goal of like, hey, I got to get in certain industries. So I already knew it. Mm -hmm. And he just had, he brung something to me and was like, I would, you know, here, what do you think? Let me do this for you. Mm -hmm. And when he did it, I looked at it, looked at the quality. I looked at his website. I looked at his brand marketing. I looked at his consistency. And I'm looking and I'm watching and I watch for six to eight months without us ever having a conversation. Mm -hmm. We met. He came past me at Invest Fest. We talked. I gave my phone number, reached out. We had a conversation. Then... I did something on social media, boosted his sales. He told me, thank you. And was like, man, I would love for you to be a partner. If you, if you would, you know, if we can do something and present it. I boosted him on social media because I was already interested because I liked what he was doing. I became a fan of his work. Right. And so it, it, that came about like, but he, it's not always, I don't want people to think that when you come to me with a proposition, bring money. Right, right. No, it's not always bring money, but bring value. Right that I can see where I'm going to win and gain at as well. And especially if it contributes to my overall, you yeah. know, my, my forecast. Definitely. 50% of businesses fail within the first five years and 38% of those businesses fail due to lack of access to capital. But 100% of business owners who are watching this aren't gonna have that issue because I'm about to teach y'all how to bankroll your business. What's going on family? My name is Marvin Francois and back in 2020, I was a new entrepreneur with little to no idea on how I was gonna build my first successful business. But fast forward a couple of years later, I've been able to build multiple successful six-figure businesses by leveraging business Business credit and today I want to give entrepreneurs the game on how they can do the same so this Thursday I'm gonna be hosting my free bankroll your business masterclass where I'm gonna teach you for how to go from having bad personal credit and little to no business funding to having perfect personal credit and access to a minimum of $50,000 in funding for your business spots are going fast and the clock is ticking so if you haven't already click the link above or below this video to secure your seat and I'll see y'all on Thursday peace I think the biggest thing that's afforded you a lot of the, the opportunities and things that you're able to do now. You know, once again, when we talk about your business acumen is, as I watch from afar, man, you're a master marketer. Like you have truly mastered the art of getting people's attention, whether it's the recession-proof mascots at InvestFest weekend, whether it's the circle of CEOs patch on a Javante Tank Davis shorts, mm -hmm. whether it's turning Las Vegas into a big reset, the, the airport in Las Vegas into a recession-proof banner. I can go on and on and on. I'm curious to know, diving into the marketing side of, of your mind, what does that process look like when you have a goal in mind and you're kind of reverse engineering to ideate, okay, whether it's lead gen, whether it's we're trying to in increase X amount in sales, whether it's just straight up brand awareness, what that process looks like from the ideation of a marketing strategy all the way to the execution of a marketing strategy and then tracking if you're able to do that as well. So let's go into it. Let's break it down. I'm going to teach you what I'll be talking about my... So when, when you look at things, let's break down, um, let's break down, I think people have heard me talk about the airport. Let's break down awareness. On, let's do the Javante Davis fight. The Javante Davis fight, when I did the, the, the fight, is I put my banners, um, I came, I'm coming right off of the Circle of CEO Conference. I'm coming right off of, um, I want to say, was that the same when I did my, with my birthday? I'm not sure, but we're coming right off of a conference, Circle CEO conference. Mm -hmm. Off of that conference, what happened is, is that I'm on fire. So mm -hmm. you look at, a lot of times what we don't look at is that let's, it was that conference. So let's take it back a step. So everything is garnering attention. You have to learn how to garner attention when you're doing marketing and advertisement, but you have to have a model in place that actually compensates you for the attention that you garner. Right. 
So with my community, with what I was building, with my price point is that you got to think is that it's $3,500, $5,000 community aspect price point to join and be a part of this. So I'm looking going, okay, we have, you know, a great community built. We got a great education platform. We got a great network and we do amazing events. We do amazing community work. We're building something that is growing and that is worth being a part of. The price point of where it's at is the price point of where it's at. Mm -hmm. So now, okay, how do I, the momentum is rolling. How do I get people to say, okay, I'm familiar, but now I'm just getting in front of different audiences. I'm, I'm meeting you at different places. Why? Because this is my community. So before the, re, the Circle of CEO conference, it was on Father's Day weekend, which is also my birthday weekend. Mm. So my thing is I say, okay, we're about to have 5,000 people in Atlanta. We're going to have 5,000 people here. It's also my birthday weekend. What do I need to do? So I say, okay, on Friday, was it Friday? Friday, I'm doing, I'll do my birthday party. No, it was Thursday. Thursday, I did my birthday party and I did a black tie event. So what happened is, is on Thursday, I do a, a birthday celebration dinner for myself and I said, okay, I'm going to celebrate my birthday. Now what happens is I go, I'm going to do a private dinner because I do need to be celebrated. I do need to have that moment where it's just me, my friends, we did it. And I'm like, okay, we did it at the aquarium. So I rented out the aquarium, did it under the, the fish, set the table up, had a private dinner. Um, me and all my friends, it was probably about 15 to 25 of us have an intimate dinner. We networked, we hung out. Um, and I said, okay, but I want to party. So now, you know, with me is that I'm, I'm big on community with recession proof. I said, okay, all recession proof members can come. I, this is us. So I rented out the Roxy and we did, um, the Casino Royale black tie event. So with the Casino Royale, if you was a recession proof member, you can come. And if you were a VIP ticket holder to uh, the Circle of CEO conference, which was a thousand dollar ticket. So if you spent a thousand to come to the VIP night, we will be at the Roxy again. So you get the VIP, but you also can come to my birthday party. So now guess what happens is all of my recession proof members, we are, we already coming. It wasn't a thing where you had to join recession proof to come. Mm -hmm. This wasn't, this was, Hey, you guys, this is private. It's only for us. So we'll be there, all my friends will be there. And then if you got a VIP ticket, black tie. Monica performed, um, I had Monica perform. Everybody was there. We had the, the violinist. We, it, was, it was just an amazing event. Mm -hmm. Open bar, wasn't, you know, open bar, free food. Just once you hear, you hear. That event cost me roughly a quarter million dollars that night, right? I spent a quarter million dollars that night. But what happened is, is that the experience is priceless. See, people don't realize that you may look at the price point of what it costs to be in my community, but how much would it cost to come to this event? How much do I, I put the money back into the community? So I had my dinner for just the intimate, just me and my friends, let's go here where we can relax. Once we get to the party, this is an experience for us. Not only am I being celebrated for my birthday with the people who rock with me, who, who, who believe in me and we're building together, but it's experience for them mm -hmm. because now all of my friends is here. So you got everybody's here. We all amongst each other. There is no red tape. Mm -hmm. There is, I don't like the VIP block off. We No, we here. Tables is tables. The, the, the bar is the bar. You earn your leisure, want to drink, earn your leisure, got to go to the bar and get a drink with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Wall Street Trapper won't, Alice, good energy won't, Neo won't. We dance in UCS, we swag surfing with everybody. Is we just have a good time mm -hmm. and eliminate the red tape that include that builds the camaraderie in the community. That adds value to what I'm building. So people get to see that. So all the social media is watching because everybody's here. You got all of the 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 the, the influential girls and women are here. The 
we got singers and actors and everybody's here. So mm-hmm. now we go, okay, that was on the front end. But to go into the marketing, the world gets to see it. But on the monetizing, my members are telling other people, yo, I'm with my mentor. Mm. I'm with him 500. This is my mentor for real. Like I'm hanging out at his birthday party. You couldn't be here. Mm. You coming up, you be at the battery, the Roxy. So you coming up, the, the vibe outside is crazy. Mm-hmm. We inside, black tie, everybody fly. Then you got a VIP ticket to the conference. Guess what? You getting to see inside of my world. You getting to see like, nah, this is a community. This is black excellence. This is what I want to be a part of. But it was a thousand dollars to come. Mm-hmm. We probably sold an extra 100, 150 tickets. It was a good thousand plus people at my birthday party. Mm -hmm. We probably generated a couple extra 100,000 plus, 200,000 plus in ticket sales, strictly off the invitation that you get to come to my birthday party. Mm -hmm. Then we did the VIP night. So now you look at my marketing is I'm celebrating my birthday, having a good time, building my community, but also building the conference at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm building the conference and I'm looking at, okay, let's build everything one week and it's just going to be an extravaganza. Set this whole fucking city on fire. Mm-hmm. Thursday, we blitzed. So now you see us, we coming through the city. We got police escorts going from the under, uh, the, the aquarium to the, to the battery. So we shutting the city down, shut the freeway down. People are watching. Mm-hmm. outside. You imagine how many impressions with all these influencers and everybody seeing all this shit. But we also made money on the front end, mm-hmm. but we also using social capital. So the next thing I moved to is then the conference happens. Mm-hmm. Shaq, all of these people are here. Mm-hmm. Um, money bag, yo, money bag, yo, flew in on my private jet. Like you got to understand this shit is just, I'm stacking it up. So money bag, yo, say, yo, I, I, I got to come from here, from Alabama, from, Mississippi or Alabama to Atlanta. I said, okay, but I'm going to send my jet. He found my jet since I'm already booking it. So I put him on my plane. Mm-hmm. So I'm at the airport when he get off. We get that content. Fine. We got Money Bag Yo performing at the concert that night. You understand? I'm stacking it up. So marketing for my jet company, right? If I if you got to be booked in, one, we using my jet company. It gains us access to now book him as a client. Mm. So I got money back, yo, being gained as a client. Then I got footage of him on my jet for marketing my own jet. So it's two different sides. The broker side getting that. The the advertisement side getting that. The conference side. You got it, It's a three-way pool for booking money back, yo. So not only is he he's selling tickets to the conference and, the con- and, and, and performing at the conference, he's also booking it and adding value to my jet. He's also now being gained as a client for our brokering and our, and our jet charter service because when he get off, he's like, damn, they, I ain't never known this. And if you notice, within a year, Money Bag Yo goes and gets a jet. Mm-hmm. I'm stop playing. So it's booking the clientele, it's building the relationships. So all of these things is, is, is happening. That's just off the Money Bag Yo side. Mm-hmm. So everything has three or four benefits. So in, it's a lot of times in marketing and advertisement for these events is positioning on where I'm going to garner attention, what businesses I'm involved with, how am I going to get and extract the most out of it? So creating that experience on Thursday has everybody all over social media, then creating the relationships with the money bag, yo, that was another thing. Then the conference is happening. The conference is getting people in, teaching them. The whole goal is to educate, make sure everybody learns and then opportunities that lead from the education that you received here. If you want to continuously learn, you can join the communities. You can join Recession Proof. You can join um, Alex. He has the the trucking Trucking portal. So he's going to teach you about trucking and give you the information. But if you want to continuously learn, hey, you can continue on this journey. So that's another aspect. So then we'll make money at the conference from people joining and saying, hey, I want to continue to learn. It's not, hey, I can't teach you everything at a conference, everything that you right. need. I can't give you every resource. I can give you a lot, but I can't give you everything. Mm-hmm. But I can expose you to it. I can expose you into the network. I can expose you into a community. I can expose you into an atmosphere where we we feel good and build. So we make money off the conference um, with selling. I knew I would make sales. That day, that conference, I, I'm frank and honest, I made a million dollars at that weekend. So... People join Recession Proof. We teach them. We educate them. I had a lot of different people come up. Herm came up and talked about business credit. Bobby came up and told them how to clean their credit. 
Um, I told them about marketing and advertisement. So we educated there. Boom. That weekend, we on fire. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Tank has a fight. Oh, okay, cool. Guess where the fight's at? Atlanta. It's in Atlanta. This will be one of the most watched fights. Mm -hmm. Hey, it, I think it was the next weekend. Mm -hmm. It was the following weekend. Cool. Put recession proof on the ring. All right. Because they like, yo, for the tank, we put the tag on the shorts, but the circle of CEOs is like, okay, we don't have a big community. You know, circle of CEOs is one thing, but it's 100,000 to put this on this fight. Recession proof is a big community. This is a representation of us. This isn't, it's one for awareness, but it's also for inclusion for people who are a part of my community mm -hmm. to see where we're at. Right. Like we not just a, a, a community, like this is us. Mm -hmm. So when you see recession proof on that fight, people like this us, like that, it was, it was bigger. That investment was not for, it was brand awareness, but it was also brand inclusion for mm -hmm. my members to be proud of, of that, hey, this is, this is us. Like we outside, we represent it on the highest stages, on the highest levels. And that's why, you know, I put it on the fight. It makes awareness amongst my comrades because now you got big CEOs, Al Hammonds, Floyd Mayweather, um, QC, all of these people who also is advertising on the fight and controlling it are now aware. Right. This We're financial literacy. This ain't DraftKings coming in, cutting this check. Right. This ain't Geico. This is a young black entrepreneur coming in, cutting corporate checks on, the, on like, like the corporate companies that's able to finance and cut this. And this is all black dollars. This is all black community building. This is all... We don't have sponsors. We doing the sponsorship now. There's no sponsors on my events. This is us, and it shows my community. Now, nah, we can stand on the same pedestals and on the same platforms and market and advertise and be represented when the world is watching. We here, too. Mm -hmm. So it was bigger. Then the mascots come into play. So we got things to represent us. It's just more inclusion. So I tell people as business owners, pay attention to when you're building your brand you got people who invest and spend money with you, make sure that they're well represented and outside and show the world that you guys exist. And when it comes to a brand, you should have your brand colors. You should have identifying things like your mascot, like your, your short. Like if you ever look at Chanel, they got the logo, but then they got the two C's. When you look at big brands, when you look at things like you can look at Coca-Cola, you can see Coca-Cola, the whole thing, but there's simple McDonald's, you see the arches, it represents it. So these are things that you have to include as well in your brand. So when I build out Recession Proof, I built it out, but then I also made my, my R identifiable. Mm -hmm. So it's just, if whether you see the whole Recession Proof or you just see this R. Mm -hmm. if, if I just put this R in a ring, you know what it is. Right. These are things that are needed in brand awareness. That's why when I put it on my plane, it don't have to say Recession Proof. It got the R. When Money Bag Yo walks off of it, the R is there. When you see it in movies, the R is there. It's brand awareness that goes into it as well. So it's a lot that I unpacked it. I, I can go deeper, but it'll damn near be a course. 100%. But I just want people to see the thought process. It's like, hey, it's marketing, it's branding, it's brand awareness. It's realizing when you curate an event, how do I get the most out of it? Certain events like the dinner was for influencers to be social going crazy. I know they're going to be on their stories going crazy at the aquarium. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to be, everybody's going to be at the party going crazy. The dollars for the gambling got my face on the, on the dollars. My face is on the chips. Brand awareness mm -hmm. and creating exclusive exclusivity as well. The biggest risk that most entrepreneurs take is trying to build a successful business without funding. But that risk is a reality for one out of every three entrepreneurs because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be in order for them to access that capital. Now, the truth is you can close the gap between where your business is versus where you want it to be by leveraging business credit. But if your personal credit report is poor, 99% of banks and lenders are going to deny you from doing so. And I should know, because a couple of years ago, I leveraged my personal credit report to get funding from Chase to start my company. And now that very same company, Take All Financial, is serving entrepreneurs just like you that are looking to restore their credit to get access to five to six figures in funding. So if you wanna go from risk to reward, click the link above or below this video to schedule your free consultation so that we can restore your credit and put you in position to access capital to build the business of your dreams.
I love it. Listen, man, that was a, that was a marketing masterclass in and of itself. I love it. Yeah. As we've navigated this conversation, one thing that you've, even outside of this conversation, it always comes back to recession proof. Literally everything you say, everything you're doing, everything that you're, that when it comes to your branding and your marketing, it always comes back to recession proof. And when we talk about recession proof, and especially me being in that community, it's not just a mentorship group, right? It's not just a, it's not a financial literacy program. It's really a community of yeah. six to seven figure entrepreneurs that are networking, building with each other, connecting, starting businesses, growing businesses and beyond. As the man behind, the, the essentially the man that, that behind the foundation of this community, I wanna know and understand what was the blueprint to go from doing weekly Zoom calls with 10 mentees at a time to now having a community of chapters all across the country and doing all these crazy live events and everything that has become now compared to where it was when you first started. What exactly was that blueprint to get here? It, it was, it was, it was listening. Mm, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't drawn out before. It wasn't some master idea. It was just evolving with times and what was needed. So it was a constant elevation of, demand and figuring out how to build the model to fit the demand. I, I could fit the demand of 10 people on a call. That was the demand at the time. But when it started to become hundreds of people demanding it, I had to reevaluate and reposition and rebuild what that looked like. Right. And that's why, hey, the chapters came about. The chapters came about because I couldn't, I knew what it was like to have an in-person experience in Atlanta. But it's different when I got hundreds of people in New York, hundreds of people in Texas. Well, we have Atlanta, but they need chapters too. Mm -hmm. So we created the chapters because I knew what that in-person experience and camaraderie did for people. Mm -hmm. They help expand and, and grow because you need people around you in your atmosphere to talk to. You need that network. And it's like, okay, we, we get together for the, the yearly conference, but we're not getting together for monthly to keep us accountable, to right. keep us motivated, to keep us going. So that's where the chapters came in. And then it was like, okay, I can teach you everything that I teach in my four-week Zoom, but if I put this on a platform and I bring in other experts on a weekly, we can grow too. Right. Then if I go acquire other courses because I see my community going, spending money other places, let's put this here. So I didn't want them leaving out. Like I started growing, bringing other courses in, not because I wanted to partner with them. It was, I didn't want my mentees to go spend money with other people and spend tens of thousands. Okay, I spent, you know, 5,000 being recession proof, 2,500 to being recession proof, but I want to learn about real estate. I want to learn about uh, e-commerce. I want to learn about this. And it's like, okay, well now I got to go spend another 1,500, 2,000 and, I might spend it two or three times because this dude wasn't as good as he thought I, as thought I was going to be. So I got to go, then learn this. Let me just bring it to us. I'll bring it to you. So now we got a platform where we can learn everything. We got the finances. And now, hey, I'll bring you the resources that you need. I love it. I think another big thing that's made us as a community stick out the way we do, the live events. And we talked about, talked about it a little bit earlier, but it's, it's getting ridiculous at this point, Marcus. It's, 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 it's pretty crazy. And it's even crazier for me because I remember you talked about a story where, you know, when you were still in the earlier stages of entrepreneurship, you put together a live event. Mm -hmm. And if I remember correctly, it was, you were essentially inviting people out in Atlanta to come get their credit repair for free. It was like a free event yep. and like a handful of people showed up, right? Mm -hmm. Fast forward some years later, you know, you, you're putting together live events where you have business owners from all walks of the country coming together for financial literacy and Mike Tyson is here, Floyd Mayweather is here, you know, I mean, name it, they're, they're at this conference. What exactly took place from that first event, right? With that, that free credit repair event that was not, didn't turn out the way that you wanted it to up until where you're, you've essentially mastered live events now. What was that process to kind of get to this point? <sighs> to get, it, it changed. The first event I feel, and this is where I tell people is that you gotta do you should always have some kind of experience. Let's not even say event. Let's just say an in-person experience for people. Every business owner should have it because it's needed to be connected with people. They want to feel that in-person touch. Yeah, They want that in-person experience. And so everybody should need it. I tried to do 500 people for free. I didn't have enough manpower. I didn't have enough muscle. My influence wasn't strong enough. 
So people didn't come. Mm-hmm. I had to step my marketing up. I had to step my branding up. And so what I did was when I stepped my marketing and my branding up, I learned, okay, let's curate another event. Well, this one was strictly for people in my community. It was only for recession proof. It wasn't for outside the public. No, it's just, hey, I know I can curate a dope event, but let me do it for the people who are vested in my community. Mm -hmm. That's what that was. Then those events, it's just, I just built on the experience I wanted to give people. Mm -hmm. So I built on the experience of what all do we want? We don't always want to just learn. Yeah. We want to come and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Well, I run Wallow and Gilly and Floyd Mayweather and put them on a stage together. That was entertaining. Okay, we got the education. We got good, 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 valuable education here, but we also had a dope experience. But then we also went to the club. We also went and had boat parties. Some of the mentees was having boat parties. They was having uh, masterminds in hotels and, and penthouses. And it was just a lot going on that was super dope. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what kind of changed it because it was like, hey, we get together and have fun. Mm-hmm. Like Friday night mixer. Like we all together hanging out. We, we took over a club. Mm-hmm. It's just a good time, but it's all members that know each other. Mm-hmm. So it's like a family reunion. I love it. I love it. You wear a lot of hats. Like I said, entrepreneur, investor, philanthropist, business mogul galore. I want to talk more so to Marcus Barney, the family man. Okay. More specifically, Marcus Barney, the husband. Okay. Um, obviously your wife, Mrs. Turquoise Barney. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to know how big of a role has she played in your success that you've had along your entrepreneurial journey? A role? Um... It's not a role, it's my partner. Mm. It's, 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 it's team members. Like it's, it's not a role that was played. It's just like a equivalent of we did it together. Mm-hmm. It's just something we, we, we did it. I may be sitting here on the camera talking, but she's somewhere right now dealing with either with the kids. I know my kids getting ready to on uh, fall break, but she's also setting up, we got doing some things for our nonprofit right now. Mm. And with the nonprofit, she's handling some, the accounting and bookkeeping for the 26 different chapters for the tour I'm getting ready to go on. So it's never a thing of like, you know, it's, I understood early on, this isn't a me thing, it's a we thing. Right. Whether it's me with the, we with the community, we in partnerships and business, we building the business and what we're building in our empire. So we've been able to build it together. And I know that she is a, She's my other, that's my partner in everything that we do. So it's a thing that is it's inevitable with my relationship. Like as a husband is, that's cool. But this is also like, this is my life partner. Mm-hmm. So my life partner is that we 50, we partnered in onto our kids, into the business, into the contributions that's needed. It's, it's very, very important. Like it's, it don't exist without it. Right. Diving deeper into that, I've come to learn from my own personal experience that some of the best partnerships, whether it's romantical, business-wise, are, and you talked on this a little bit earlier, where your strengths are your respective partner's weaknesses and, you know, their strengths are your weaknesses. What are some of those qualities that you saw earlier on that let you know that this was someone that you wanted to marry? She was, she was strong enough to hold me accountable, know when to fall back and let me be me and understand who I am, Right. I'm a Gemini. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Um, I got a big ego, mm-hmm. pride, but she's strong enough to be able to, to, to stand into it, to stand up to it. But she also was respectful enough to know, like, when that, when my Kanye, when I get the Kanye in on my Gemini side, to know, like, you got it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but then also she came with aspects of organization because like I look into my upbringing, who my parents were, but like my father-in-law raised her with a real organizational understanding of paperwork, mm. corp- like structure. She has a lot of structure of like how you do things, looking at your banking, being on top of those type of things. That was her strong point when I met her. And that was things that my father-in-law instilled in her. So the things that he instilled in her gave her attributes that 
I looked at. And a lot of times is that when I when we kept, when we got together, like her strong points were off of her upbringing. And a lot of times we look at significant others and we look at people and we judge them. We never judge the background that they come from. Right. I looked and judged the background that she came from. What kind of support you got? Like, okay, I get it, who you are, but who's behind you? No one, no one man is bigger than the team. Mm-hmm. What team do you come from? Who cares and loves you? If you need support and things like that, is it just going to be me? Or do you have somebody who loves you and, 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 and has your back? What do you come with? Mm-hmm. That's one thing that I, I, I loved about, like, even with my wife is that who she was to me. But then also, like, who loved her? Because that's what you're going to get. Like, I know my family and what my mom is to me. But when I looked at my significant other, I looked at Turk and I look at her father, of who her father was to her was, I got your back no matter what. Mm-hmm. So she has a, a undenying confidence in, I don't give a damn about nothing in this world because my daddy got my back. I can do anything. I, I'm willing to go try. I'll do it. I'm going to figure it out. I know my dad. I know my dad set me a solid foundation. He gave me skill sets. He hold me accountable. But I know he always going to have my back as well. Mm-hmm. And so that gave me, like, comfort. Because you, you're not sitting here going, please, I need help. If, oh my God, I'm just, it's all on you, if anything. No, I have a partner who right. goes, hey, if everything falls, like, I got support. It's not just, it's not just going to be on, just on you. Like, don't think that it's just on me. Like, if we need support, like, she had a father that was there that is also helping and was willing to support and willing to back it mm-hmm. and still with my kids. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so when I looked at my partner, it was bigger than just her. I loved her for who she was, but who she was came from how she was raised and what she came from and what household she came from, family she came from. So that's something I think a lot of times get overlooked by people in relationships. We don't talk about that. Like, we your family. Right. What's your parents like? You know what I mean? Like, cool. You, you're great. Seems like front-facing, but... What's behind you? So, you know, that was one of the things I think. I read a story, and you, uh, you can confirm if this is true or not. I read a story where you talked about when you first moved to Atlanta, you went celibate for a year because you wanted to, you know, just really like lock in and, you know, make sure you got things right before you started putting yourself out there and dating. Speaking to a lot of the younger dudes, you know, you, like you just talked about just doing doing your due diligence in your partner, right? How big of a role did personal development playing into the work that went into that? Bro, discipline, bro. I'm 21. 21. Mm-hmm. You got to understand. I come from California, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be like, I'm some super disciplined. It was fear too. Okay. I come from California. 18 year old. I've always, can I say, I've always been me. Mm-hmm. Cars, Clothes, like, always been me. Girls dating, boom. Moving to Atlanta, I was scared of that AIDS. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. <laughs> okay. Not gonna lie to y'all. That AIDS shit was real. Okay. Like, you know, that's what they talk about, mm-hmm. how high it is amongst the African American community. I'm sitting there like, how I've been playing mm-hmm. and dating and, and 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 being a kid and childish and running around having my way. I was scared to death. I said, you know what? Uh, I'm not willing to die about it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so when I moved here, though, it also was in the time of my business is that I had left real estate and I had to figure something else out new. Mm-hmm. But I also had to figure out a whole new city. When I re- like I'm trying to find out, figure out Atlanta. I lived in Kennesaw, so I'm figuring out Cobb County, one, is, is police everywhere. And I'm looking going, man, they strict out here. So you're learning about Cobb County. You're looking at, like, I'm moving to this new environment. like, And I'm like, if you ever been, like, Cobb County and Sandy Springs is, like, one of the places where it's, like, 
super condensed, like, can I say it? I don't want to sound racist, but it's shit white as hell. Mm -hmm. And it's, you looking in, like, their police is, like, super strict. I'm going back to the police, not like I'm doing something illegal. But I'm living in, like, this white town that I thought Atlanta is, like, black, but I moved to Kennesaw. And I said, uh-oh, this ain't, this ain't that. It's a, they play a little bit. It's a little country up here. And racism exists mm -hmm. in, like, downtown Kennesaw and, like, Confederate flags. And I'm seeing type of shit. And I'm going, okay, let me, I'm figuring out a new place. Mm -hmm. So then I started learning about Marietta. Then I started going into the city and learning. So throughout this time, I'm also learning business, how to make money here, hustling, trying to figure out the city and how to move around. I can't do that and chase girls. Yeah. And one of the things that I had to conquer because of, I realized that you're going to either be focused on developing yourself here, understanding how business works, or you're going to be out here because the women is here. Mm -hmm. You can play how you want to play. They out here. But this is a whole nother life because now you can go out Monday through Friday, Monday, Sunday through Monday. Monday through Sunday, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can go out every night in Atlanta and it's going to be a different crowd. Right. You can go out and it can be hood getting wasted. You can go out with the college kids. You can go out with the, the, the upper echelon influential influencer type of crowd. Mm -hmm. Everything is here. Mm -hmm. Brother, you can get consumed in this life. Right. And this is what it's going to be. Or you can figure out about money, figuring out how the atmospheres, how the businesses work here and be focused on that. Even if you still go out, but the scope of what you're going out for changes. Right. Of seeing the city, seeing who the movers and shakers are. See, I can go out to look and see who's running the clubs, who's the most popping in the city. Let me figure out who the superstars is. Let me figure out who popping out here. Or I can go figure out what girls is out here and I'm going looking for that. So I realized like, okay, let's be disciplined. Like I had to discipline myself and I said, okay, let's go a year without chasing sex. Mm -hmm. If I can control my man part of my body, I can control my life because this has controlled me at 18 to 21. Like mm -hmm. this is my main controlling factor. It's just right. like, I'm just looking like, I'm testosterone going crazy. I'm just looking for girls. I just want to have fun. I'm, right. this, is, this is why I go out. This is why I get dressed. This is why, you know what I'm saying? Like I do what I do. It's based around girls. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, if I can control this, I know I can control myself. I can control my life. And so going a year doing that, it showed me like, hey, the discipline, you can do whatever you want to do if you can control that. And most dudes, it's a struggle. You can't control that. Right. You can't say I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on that. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm focused, bro. I I, I never played so much basketball in my life. <laughs> like when I tell you I was working out, playing basketball every day, working, hustling 24-7. I got into a point where I was the best version of myself. Mm. And that showed me what I was capable of. And still till today, I think that built the most confidence in me mm -hmm. than ever before. Like that's my confidence builder where people don't realize like, like, yo, like they talk, like I talked about it, like how I felt when I was a big dude, even when I gained all the weight and real big, I still felt like me. I felt like what you see now is how I felt then. Mm -hmm. It's what I felt I who I was. But that's just the ultimate confidence in myself to know, like, I can do anything. I can conquer anything. I can control myself. I can control anything that go on in my world is, is going to be depicted off of me. And that was my biggest one of, like, that's one of my proudest moments, bro. I don't even know where you read that or you know, <laughs> but 100% that's true. Um, you know, I had to do my research. Bro, 100%. <laughs> like, I, I really, that was like a moment for me that, Bro, when I tell you, I, I was grinding. I remember I bought a van. Um, I got my first place in Atlanta. I bought a van. I started selling shoes. Um, I, I was doing odd jobs, like off of Craigslist. I started just maneuvering. Mm -hmm. Clean. I remember cleaning roofs. That, that's when I like I got into like shoe cleaners. Dude gave me, a, I was cleaning a roof. He gave me, he had a bunch of shoe cleaners. And I started partnering and putting that with like 
selling Air Force Ones. Wow. And I was selling Air Force Ones on Craigslist. I was buying and ordering from China. Like, bro, like I was like- Grinding. Going, I started buying and reselling cars out here and, and building relationships with so many people, mechanics, and it just, it went and I, and I learned the city. Mm -hmm. Started learning who the boutique owners were. And it was, that was, that was a very, very important moment in my life um, that kind of set a foundation. And ultimately, you know, that foundation allowed you to get your footing to where you've gotten to where you are now. And for me, you know, as we, we get to begin to close things out, I'm happy that I not only got to connect today with Marcus Barney, the entrepreneur, but more so Marcus Barney, the man. One thing I've come to learn, this would be my closing question for you, is a lot of high level entrepreneurs like yourself. Does what, this have to be your closing question? I got time. I'm here. I rock with it. I like this talk we have. <laughs> if you got another one, let me know. I got. If you got, because I see you got notes and paper. I don't want to cut you short. No, no, no. You're not, you're not I be, talk a lot. So. You no, know, it's cool. No, I love it. You make it, you make it, it makes it a lot easier for me with content. Yeah. I'm curious to know for you, you know, um, one thing I realized about like a lot of high level entrepreneurs like yourself, you guys think a lot about your mortality, right? When it comes to like, yo, you, I mean, we're all going to die, right? But I think because you guys are so driven, um, it's something that you're constantly thinking about for you when you think about your mortality and you think about what it'll be to reflect on, you know, your last days at that point when you've created the hundred millionaires, where you've done nine figures and beyond, where you've had all the success that you could have possibly imagined. What do you think for you will be the most impactful thing that you would have left behind when it's all said and done? most impactful thing that I will leave behind when it's all said and done, I hope is my children. Talk about that. I just hope that the things that I create, that I recreate, that I'm 100% responsible for, the only reason that they exist, the only reason they walk this earth is because of me. I hope that I create something that is honorable, respectful, impactful, loving, and, and when I say impactful, it doesn't mean going and getting a Nobel Peace Prize award. I don't care if they they raise children that are great mm. and imp have great impact on them. I just want my children, the things that I create, to be proud of what I worked for in developing the opportunities for us to have freedom mm. mentally, financially not being barred down from the societal stresses of poverty and struggle to where they can actually think. And I just hope that they respect the fact and are impacted by my ability to create an environment for them to not have to worry about being oppressed, being, you know, in toxic environments, being deprived of education, resources, anything in life. I want them to, if anything they respect, not about money. It's not about my what my personal goals and things that I wanted was out of life that mm -hmm. I go and get and make a hundred millionaires. That's all fine. I just hope that they are impacted by the ability. I mean, that what matters the most is that how I impacted them mm -hmm. when it comes to like what they are able to exist in, in the environment that I create for them to make them become a better person. Like my daughter speaks French. She's six years old. It's crazy. And I just want to give them the like, the worldly experiences, not cultural experiences. I want them to really experience the world, not just the culture that we come from. And I want them to just be world diverse, be impactful, and that I leave, that I create and help them become good people and assets to this world is the best thing that I can leave behind. Mr. Barney, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for coming through. This was easily... It, one of the, if not the best episode that I've done today. And I appreciate you greatly. And I appreciate each and every single one of y'all that have tuned into this episode. If you haven't already, what are you doing? Take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right here, right now to just go ahead, slap the like button and show this episode some love. For those who aren't familiar, where can they find you? Him 500 on Instagram and at Him 500 on YouTube. Tap in um, social media platforms it's at Him 500. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we appreciate each and every single one of y'all for tuning in. I'm Marvin Francois, him 500. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. And as always, thank you and God bless. Peace.